Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show you a little secret. Some of you asked me how did I manage to create these particles here. Well, instead of just showing you a recipe that you have to follow, what I want to do is to show you the whole process that I'm going through in order to create particles like these. So let's get started. Alright, so to begin with, the first thing that I'm usually doing is adding a new GPU particles 3D, and this node allows me to spawn a bunch of particles. Now, of course, I have to take it so that I can visualize it more easily and put it in some comfortable place, and afterwards, I need to make something to make it visible. Now, there are two things that need to be done. First of all, I have to assign some shape that the particles are going to have. And the simplest form is a quad mesh because it's simply a rectangle on which these particles are going to get drawn. Now, I still do not see anything because this particle node also needs a process material. And this material is just basically going to tell the particles how to behave. So if I click on particles process material, I'm going to get this material that, as you can see, is spawning a bunch of rectangles. After reaching this point, what I usually think about is how do I want my particle to look like and how do I want my particle to behave? If I want to control how the particle looks to maybe give it this shiny yellow gradient, then I simply have to go to the draw passes and attach to my quad here a new material. To create this material, I'm simply going to select a new standard material 3D, and in here you'll see that I have again a bunch of properties. Now, at this point, it's really up to you and to your creativity to change how this looks like, but we can start easily. So let's say that I want to change the color. The color usually is changed from the albedo section, and in here I could simply input like a raw color that this a rectangle is going to take, or I could even use a texture, maybe you can use any kind of image texture, but this time I'm simply going to use a gradient texture 2D. And to make it easier to visualize, I'm simply going to spawn less particles, so just two particles here, and now I can go and modify my gradient. Now, the first thing that I'd like to do would be to, first of all, not have this linear gradient. I'd like to have a gradient that is square just like this one, and I can simply go to fill, and in here I could select radial, this is giving me a round one, or I could select square to make this square looking particles, and I could maybe even change this to be 0.5 and 0.5 so that the gradient starts from the center. Now, as you might notice, obviously these are not perfect squares, they are more transparent the more I reach the edge of my rectangle. So to have that transparency, I'm simply going to change it. So first of all, what I want to do is to not have this black in the middle, I would like to have some very light looking color. And at the edge, I would like a darker color, but I would like to reduce the transparency. Now, as you might notice, nothing really happened, the transparency is still the same, and this is not because of the texture that I'm using, the texture really uses transparency, but it's because of the fact that the material overall doesn't have transparency. And what I noticed is that the best behavior I get for this pixelated look is from Alpha Scissor. And if I select Alpha Scissor, you see that uh, it kind of cuts the transparency and I can play around with this to make it look however I want. Now, of course, a problem that I have is that this rectangle keeps getting shaded. You see that depending on the light that is hitting the rectangle, I'm getting different results. So I would like these particles to not be shaded at all. And as you can see now, they start to get closer to this uh, square looking shape. Now also to get closer to this aesthetic, what I'd like to do is to make the center a bit more intense and to do that I'm going to duplicate this gradient color by holding Alt and clicking and dragging. As you can see this center piece here is getting more intense and of course I want it to get transparent sooner so I'm just gonna drag this a bit towards the center so that it closes in much faster. Okay, but we are pretty much done with how we want to make this look like. So the next step would be to, of course, tell these particles how we want them to behave. Now, before actually telling them how to behave, one thing that's been bothering me is the fact that the particles are rotated towards the Z axis, and I would like them to always be rotated towards the camera. 
And to do that, what I have to do is to go to drawing and in here I can align the transform towards the camera by selecting Z billboard. And right now, if I rotate around, you see that no matter where I'm looking from, these particles look towards me. Okay, now let's see how we want these particles to behave. Well, first of all, we would like to make them smaller, right? Well, if we go to display, you'll see that we have here this scale option and we can actually modify these scale values so that we get to something more interesting. Now, we have a mean and max value and you are going to see this mean and max value in most of the fields and this pretty much means that these particles are going to not always be the same size because they would be pretty boring if all the particles look the same, so this is just adding some variation to our particles. So if we want this to be smaller, let's maybe try 0.01 and here let's try 0.1. And right now I think we are getting particles roughly the same size as these ones. All right, so by setting the minimum and maximum of our scale, we pretty much tell our particles what scale they should take whenever they spawn. But what if, however, we wanted to change the scale over time? Well, you will see that this property, and actually most properties, also have a curve option. And by adding one of these curve options, we can specify, you see I created here a curve, we can specify whenever the particle spawns what the value of our scale should be, and whenever it ends, how it should change. So for example, right now we are starting from one. So we are starting from the initial size and we are ending in the initial size. So basically the size of the particles is not changing. However, if I wanted to, let's say, make the particles small at the beginning, I could drag this down and you see that at the beginning, I almost get nothing. And at the end, the size gets larger and larger. And of course, I could be adding a bunch of points to make them like oscillate and get larger and smaller and so on. And you can modify these however you want. And I would honestly want you to give it a shot. Now for these particles, I would honestly just want them to scale down towards the end of their life so that they don't just vanish out of existence. And if I want them to not scale down as fast as this line indicates, what I could do would be to change this handle here. And as you can see, by changing the handle, the size is going to stay closer to one for longer and only right at the end of the lifetime of the particle, it's going to get smaller. But if this shape is still not right, what you could do would be to like add another point here. And of course now it stays one and right here at the end is just going to get a bit smaller and maybe it's going to change faster towards this smaller value. Okay, but let's see what else we can do. So for example, first of all, I would like the particles to spawn around a light bulb. And right now they are spawning from the center point. And to change from where they spawn, I could go to the spawn option and select position. And in here you see that I have this emission shape. And if I want them to spawn from outside the light bulb, I could simply select sphere surface. And if I select the sphere surface, now the particles you see are spawning randomly. Now, of course, what I have to do is to also change the emission sphere size. And to do that, I could decrease this value. Right now, as you can see, it's a slightly closer towards the center. Maybe I could decrease it even more to 0.15. And now most of the particles are spawning from this little area here. Okay, what else? Well, of course, the particles are falling and dust is very, very light. So what I would like to do is to reduce the gravity that is dragging my particles down. To do that, let's make this Y value be a bit larger and maybe, I don't know, maybe minus 0.1 or something like that, maybe a bit larger. And as you can see, the particles are kind of floating in the air right now. All right, but they are sticking towards the center. So if I want them to move around, what I could do would be to change this radial acceleration. And again, you will usually see that by just slightly modifying these values, you're going to get better results. So here, if I drag this just a little, let's say, let's see what happens if I drag it a lot, first of all. So as you can see, it shoots out in a certain direction radially, so around this sphere point. 
So I would like them to shoot out, but maybe, maybe just a little. So maybe something like that. So they get into a certain random direction. Okay, let's see what other properties do. So for example, the linear acceleration, you will see that it just increases the speed of the particles over time. And I don't think I want the speed to increase. I want them just to float around. But yeah, this is interesting to know. And the tangential acceleration, what does this do? Well, as you can see, it makes the particles kind of rotate around the circle. And this one I, I kind of like. So let's maybe set some value for this as well. So 0.2 or something like that. And of course, let's see the damping. Damping is pretty much just how much the particle speed should slow down. And if I wanted to slow down a bit more, then maybe I could increase this damping. And as you can see, whenever I have these particles move, the closer they get to the end, they move a bit slower. And if I increase the damping a lot, they barely move at all. Okay, but again, the damping, maybe just to look kind of natural, I'm going to set it to zero point something, something very, very small. All right, but the difference from these particles and these other particles here is that they are very clumped together. And how could I avoid them being like this? Well, this is where we get out of the way in which particles behave and we go towards changing how many particles we have and how much do we want these particles to leave. So as you can see, the particles are already moving in this direction. The problem is just that they die very early. So what I could do is to increase the lifetime of these particles to maybe, I don't know, five seconds to make them last longer. And as you can see, they go out into space more often. And another thing that I could do would be to, yeah, maybe not make them go so fast. So I could reduce the speed scale to something like 0.2 or something like that. And as you can see, they are now kind of just floating around, but we just have a little amount of particles. So what I could do would be to increase these particles to, I don't know, something like 22 particles. And if we wait a little, these 22 particles should start spawning. Okay, now one thing that I don't like about these particles is that they are kind of always uh, big. So I'm just going to increase the randomness so that this scale parameter that I modified previously, it's a bit more random. And maybe I could even change how the scale behaves. Let me see if I go to display scale and maybe simply just remove this curve and let it be between 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. As you can see now, I think I get a bit smaller particles, but even so I could reduce this value to, I don't know, 0.05. And yes, my particles are slightly smaller. Now, of course, we got pretty close to what these other particles look like, but we didn't get the behavior of these particles exactly. And I don't really think we should. I think it's fine if we have a similar behavior and it pretty much comes to experimenting a lot with these values. So change things around, don't really go on copying formulas, maybe get some ideas from other places, but you will see that by simply following this pattern of deciding how the particles look like, deciding how they behave, and just deciding how many of them there are going to be, you are going to be able to create most of the particle effects you want. All right, but this is pretty much it. So thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot to my supporters, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.